following program is recorded content created by the Truth Network. It's Matt Slick Live. Matt is the founder and president of the Christian Apologetics Research Ministry, found online at karm.org. When you have questions about Bible doctrines, turn to Matt Slick Live for answers. Taking your calls and responding to your questions at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. It's me, Matt Slick. You're listening to Matt Slick Live. If you want to give me a call, all you have to do is dial 877-207-2276. And if you want, you can email me also. Just email me at info at karm.org. Info at karm.org. And you can just put in the subject there. You can say something like karm. This could be a radio question or radio comment. And then I can get to it. It's easy. And uh, we usually have a lot more callers coming in the last half of the show. So if you've got a question now, you're able to do it. Uh, now's a good time. If you can't, that's just the way it is. All right, all right, all right, all right. So let's see, let's see, let's see. I think what I'm going to do is just jump right into some of the uh, the questions because we don't have any callers waiting right now. And we'll get to it. All right, let's see. Uh your info on the first family smile 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 that's all it says info on the first family I, I wonder if that person is talking about the Biden crime family now you think about it folks why is the Biden crime family uh, not impeached why isn't Biden out and uh, why they open the borders uh, so much who destroyed that pipeline uh, why is the interest rate so high? Why uh, the, there's so many emails and so many uh, verifications of Biden being in collusion uh, with his son and um, the issue of, the, of well, let's just say uh, not so nice, not so uh, ethical um, and legal uh, issues. So, uh, yeah, I think our our country is being taken over by uh, by enemies of our of our country, and I, yeah, that's what I think. Anyway, that's what that email is about. I guess I don't know. Let's try another one. Question: uh, We already got to that one, Jose eleven twelve yesterday. To Matt, I'm a non-believer. Um, oh yeah, we already got to that one about creating heaven and hell. All right, the passage referencing five Philistine cities. Oh, boy. Excuse me. Sorry about that. In First Samuel. Uh, these are the golden tumors. Okay, this may attest to David five stones. Oh, okay. The golden tumors that Philistine returned as a guilt offering to the Lord, one for Ashdod. A number of cities in Philistine belong to the five lords, both fortified. Okay. Uh, which may relate to the five stones. Actually, I think there's something going on there. It reminds me, I think it's in John 4. Uh, the woman at the well had five husbands. And I, th I remember someone told me something really interesting about this. The five husbands uh, might relate to the five nations or something that had been there previous to Israel. There was something. I can't remember what it was. It was really interesting. Uh, maybe if someone knows what that is, they can tell me. So uh, there you go. There's that. And by the way, I released uh, small bios on Carlos Garbires. He's our uh, Spanish guy um, in Colombia. He works uh, with Carm. David Brito. Uh, he's our Portuguese guy. He works in Brazil. And I updated Laura's uh, thing. So we've got Laura's there. And uh, I already have Joanne. We're slowly putting stuff together. What I'm going to do is create a chart or a table of who is responsible for what things so that people who want to know who does what in karma can contact them. How about that? Sounds good? Yes, it does. It's a really good idea. See? Yeah, someone agrees. All right, let's just jump on the air here with, uh, let's see, Joseph from Utah. Hey, Joseph, welcome. You're on the air. Hey, Matt. I had a question for you. Uh, I know sure. we, I know I mentioned the show The Chosen before. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Do you, have you seen some of those episodes? I've seen all of them. I, well, I haven't seen it for okay. anything for two or three months. So I don't know if they have anything new, but uh, it was completely caught up. Yeah. 
All right. Well, here's my question. So obviously there's parts that are not in the Bible because obviously the Bible is talking about the main points of Jesus's life and some of the things his disciples did. How, how accurate would you say the, uh, the characters are that for during the time that they're not in the Bible, like Simon, he seems to be kind of an aggressive character. I mean, he, he's now, you know, coming around now that he's spending more time with right. Jesus, you know, right. and mm-hmm. obviously you don't know a whole lot about Nicodemus other than he was a secret follower of Jesus. But is there any historical documents that would prove that these characters are pretty close? I mean, obviously there's no way they're going to have 100% of the dialogue that happened back then. But as far as characters, I would hope there's some kind of other documents I can show my mom and say, hey, look, here's more proof of the, the kind of person that Nicodemus was during that time, or here's the kind of person Simon or something like that was. Is there anything like that? Nope, not that I'm aware of. Okay, so um, Peter in the Bible is aggressive, you know, let's go you know, call fire down. And so they kind of just wrote that into his personality. Uh, John is the beloved disciple, um, so they kind of write that in, and it'll, it'll, it'll be developed, I'm sure. And uh, Matthew, who I love the, the idea that Matthew, the tax collector, is autistic, because I'm autistic, and my name's Matthew, so I get a kick out of that. But uh, me too. I I could have I could have thought that same thing. It, like he just seems to be like he's an autistic character. You know, he doesn't really look at anybody in the face. He repeats a lot, and right. he's very like OCD about things. Yep. And and there's nothing in the scriptures that I'm aware of that would suggest that's him, uh, the real Matthew. But nevertheless. You know, they took a license, uh, and of course they're going to do that because Mm -hmm. they have to fill in many, 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 many hours of stuff. So it's not a big deal. I don't have any problem with that principle. Just like uh, the Ten Commandments. There's a lot of stuff in the Ten Commandments, but with Charlton Heston, that they took liberties. Uh, But the general idea is the story is there, and uh, they're trying to stay faithful to Scripture, and that's okay. And according to Philippians chapter 1, verse 18, which uh, I, I refer to about that uh, in Philippians one eighteen, what then, uh, only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in this I rejoice. Yes, I will rejoice. So I rejoice that Christ is proclaimed, even in, um, in that series. Okay? Okay, so then... Like I said, there is not, there's no other kind of backing of who some of these characters were, because I know they said that Herod was actually worse than, or than he was portrayed in the Bible. They, the, the Bible showed us, you know, he was pretty bad, but then there are other, I guess, kind of things that say he was a lot worse than what the Bible actually gave time for on Herod. So that's why I was wondering if maybe there was something yeah, around other people like Nicodemus and stuff. Yeah, okay. I just don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe there is, but I I don't know. I'm not aware of it. Maybe there's some other writing. So if some people who are listening know of other sources where it talks about them through a legend or some of the early church fathers had heard stuff and they wrote it down, then, you know, uh, then fine. But uh, other than that, I just don't know. I don't think so, though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I love the show, and I, I know the parts that are actually are in the Bible. I'm like, look, Ma. That's 100% accurate. That's exactly what it says in the Bible, where Jesus says this, or Mm -hmm. this happens. So I love the show. I just was hoping that maybe you might know something that could give me a little more backing for other characters. All right, well... Sorry, wish wish I could help you. All right? That's all right. Well, as always, Matt, I do appreciate your time, and thank you, and uh, and have a great day, and God bless, brother. Okay, you too, man. Thanks a lot. God bless. All right, that was Joseph. Hey, we have three open lines if you want to give me a call. 877-207-2276. Spence from North Carolina. Welcome. You're on the air. Hey, how's it going, Matt? Great show, man. I love you. I listen to you all the time. God bless you. Um, (laughs) Thanks, man. Appreciate it. I have a question, man. I was having a discussion with some friends of mine in a Bible study meeting, and the conversation came up about a... um, um, we are well, I think we have the same opinion when it comes to women um, leading in a pastoral role. I do believe the word on that. Um, the question was, is that 
a gentleman asked me that if a man, if a minister was ordained by a female pastor in a pastoral role as a minister, hmm. how does that line up in terms of a true ordination? Yeah, that's a good question. I've never even thought of that. Uh, I would, my first reaction is to say that I don't recognize it as a valid ordination. Yeah. Wow. But uh, there could be exceptions. Um, you know, I talked to a woman in Pakistan, and she was a pastor. And the reason she was and the men weren't, she said, is in the area where she was, if the men stood up to be pastors, they'd be killed quickly. Right. And Absolutely. women could get away with it. So that's an exception. But uh, normally speaking, no, I, I, women pastors and elders, this is simply not biblical. And uh, they should be avoided. And so a woman who had ordained someone, I don't recognize her uh, position, so I don't recognize uh, that ordination either. I guess I don't know how, that's my position. Okay. Wow. That's a strong opinion. All right, man. Yeah, I, I do in some way agree with you. Um, wow. Does the word cook in any way um, clarify that, you know, that there's been cases in which women has been used um, because of the men, you know, was not just obligated yeah, in their position of leadership? Deborah, sure. De Deborah in the Old Testament is a judge. The men weren't doing their job, so she stood up. Yep. And uh, so, but she was not a pastor. People use Deborah. See, it's okay for the people, women to be pastors. That she wasn't a pastor. She wasn't an elder. It's a different right. situation a all altogether. And so the Bible says that the uh, the elders to be uh, you know uh, an Hermes Gunaikas, you know, a man of one woman, a husband of one wife. That's what it's saying. How's a woman fit that bill? It's just, it's ridiculous. Paul says he doesn't allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over man, but remain silent for Adam was first created, 1 Timothy 2, 12 and 13. How's, so it's just not accepted. He says uh, the next chapter in, in uh, 1 Timothy three fifteen, he's giving instruction on how we're to behave in the household of God. So I say to these people who deny that, or who affirm within pastors and elders, I say, you're denying God's word. You're just denying it. I need right. you to repent. They do need to repent. And so women pastors and elders, if you're listening to me, you're a woman pastor, a woman elder, you need to step down immediately. You just, well, that means the church would have a pastor. Good. Then let the men stand up and get it done. Okay? Get out of their way and let the men stand up and start behaving like men instead of mamby-pamby um, uh, crackerjack theologians who believe that a woman can... A pastor and, and preach and teach when that's not the position of a woman. I could talk about this for quite a bit. It's really a, a sensitive issue. Oh, yeah. It's, it's an heard, important issue. <laughs> heard lots of your conversation based mm -hmm. on it. So mm -hmm. in the position in which a man has been ordained by a female pastor in that role of leadership, pastoral leadership, um, do you feel like if he himself is a man of the word and he believes that you know a woman should not be in that pastoral position, but yet you know, before he before he understood it fully. Well, hold on, um, hold on. We got a break. We, we got a break. So no, you're not going to finish it before we yeah. get the breaks. So hold on, and we'll get to that yeah. uh, after the break. Okay, All right, buddy. All right. Hey, folks, please stay tuned. We have uh, several open lines. Give me a call eight seven seven two zero seven two two seven six. We'll be right back. Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Hey everybody, welcome back to this show. I want to hear from you. Give me a call, 877-207-2276. Let's get back on with Spence. Okay, Spence, where were we? Okay, yeah, as I was saying, um, in all righteous, do you do you feel as if, um, because I, I myself, uh, leaning a little bit towards the fact that maybe that minister should go back and renew his um, his ordination through a credible, yeah. you know. Yeah, I would agree. Yep, I would agree. Yep. So yep. think about this. A woman is, is a pastor and an elder in a modern church here in America. 
she's obviously not believing the Word of God in that area, and she's submitting it to her under private interpretation. The Bible's clear, okay? It is. And if people want to do a public, I do this every now and then. For years I've been doing this. If you want to have a public debate with me on it, let me know. We'll fly out to your church. We'll do a, a, an arranged, public, recorded, in front of your church debate on the issue. But uh, in all the 18 years and I've been doing this uh, full time, I mean, five days a week, I've not had anybody take me up on it, not even once. So wow. I think it tells something, okay, because they know what the Bible says. So I think the women who do this, uh, once they've been shown uh, there and they don't affirm the word of God, are in rebellion. Now, why would you want to be ordained out of someone who is purposely rebelling against the word of God? Mm. See? I don't trust them. Right. And I wouldn't trust the men who approve of it either. I'm sorry, but I wouldn't. I have a high regard for the for uh, the, the ministry and, and eldership and a high regard for the responsibility of men. I have a higher regard for that than I do for the, those of the women because the men are the ones who are supposed to be doing what they're supposed to be doing in the church. When Adam and Eve sinned, uh, the pre-incarnate Christ came to the man and said, where are you? He didn't ask her. He, he addressed the man first. This is how it is. And so men need to step up and stop being um, wimps and uh, start uh, acting like uh, good godly men and uh, don't allow women pastors and, t- and teachers and elders and stuff, uh, elders, uh, pastors and elders, don't allow them in your church. Just say, no, it's not your position. Here's the word of God. You need to submit to the word of God. They won't like that. They won't like it. But uh, I think that men right. should stop putting their finger Put it up in the into the air uh-huh. and see which way the cultural wind is blowing, and just follow that. Now, I believe men need to stand up and behave like men, and not like followers. They need to be uh, following followers of Christ and His apostles, and stand up for that. Right. And if it costs them, then so be it. Stand up for men, as First Corinthians sixteen thirteen says: "Be strong, act like men." That's what I believe. Right. Wow. Appreciate it so much. I think um, I think you touched on everything um, as if I feel about the, um, the situation and circumstances, and yeah, I, I I don't feel like I've led them in a direction in which um, to ask clarity to the question he asked. So appreciate you, Matt. Hey, no problem, man. God bless. Appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. All right, folks, we have nobody waiting right now. If you want to give me a call, 877-207-2276. Yes, I said it. If it's new to you, you're not sure about what I just said. Um, women are not supposed to be pastors and elders. Let me go over it in Scripture. According to Scripture, what does the Bible say? Paul says, I do not allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man, but remain quiet. The word quiet there is hesukia, and it means uh, you you. I mean, it doesn't mean you're silent. It means just keep it down. So, but to remain uh, hushed is like that. Uh, you know, hush. You can still talk. You can do stuff. But it's just that's what's going on. And he says, "For it was Adam who was first created, and then Eve." And so, what he's doing is he's uh, he's tying this uh, this authority thing into uh, the created order. It was Adam who was first created. This deals with what's called primogeniture, that the first one formed. Uh, Adam. He's the one that God. Uh, formed first. He's the one that God gave the authority to name the animals. He's the one who named Eve. He's the one through whom sin entered the world. Uh, Romans 5.12 even though Eve sinned first. And so uh, this is what Paul the Apostle ties it into. And then when you dare to go to uh, one chapter, just the next chapter, 3.15, in case I'm delayed, uh, I write so that you may know how one ought to conduct himself in the household of God. So he's writing about this, what is supposed to be in the household of God. He's specifically doing that. That's uh, 1 Timothy 3.15. But notice what he says in 1 Timothy 3. It's a trustworthy statement if any man aspires to the office of overseer. That's the word episkopos. So some people call it bishop. It's a fine work he desires to do. An overseer must then be above reproach the husband of one wife. That's what it says. It's Andra Mias Gunaikas. And that's husband of one wife. Uh, temperate, prudent, respectable, etc. He must be one who manages his own household well. And uh, But if a man does not know how to do that, uh, then how can he manage the church? So it goes on. 
Okay. Now, when you go over to, uh, I'll do this, go over to Titus. Okay. I'm going to read what, ta- what Paul says to Titus. Titus chapter 1. He says uh, in verse 5, For this reason I left you in Crete, that you would set in order what remains and appoint elders in every city as I directed you. The word elders in Greek is uh, in the masculine form. Now this is important because in uh, in Greek, nouns have gender. They have masculine, feminine, or neuter. So it's a very precise language. Uh, Elders in every city are directed if any man is above reproach. So he's, he's saying, if any man is above reproach, uh, the husband of one wife. And here we have, why is that? Keep doing that. Every time I click on a word, it does that. I don't want to do that. I'll have to check that. And so, uh, if any man is above reproach, the husband of one wife. And that's on there, Miaskunaikos. So he said that the elders are to be husbands of one wife, okay? Who have children to believe. And it says, for the overseer must be above reproach. So now what Paul is doing is equating the uh, the elder with the overseer, the bishop. So they're either the same office with different words or slightly different offices. But uh, nevertheless, we'll get into that now. It says that uh, they're to be um, the husband of one wife. How does a woman do fill that? How does, how does a woman take care of that? But can't, right? And then if you go over to 1 Timothy 5.17, the elders, oh man, the elders who rule well. Okay, the elders who rule well. And that is uh, masculine also, uh, are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. So the preacher in that church, uh, we have elders who are preachers and teachers. And so what we see here is that uh, the elder is uh, male. That's what it says. That's how it's supposed to be. So why is it people aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing? I'm just, you know, amazed. Uh, I'm amazed that people don't want to believe the Word of God. And so I'm going to just tell you that if you are attending a church with a woman pastor, woman elder, just leave. You should leave. But it might offend somebody. Oh, so you're worried about the opinion of men? But I don't agree with their interpretation. Then call me up and tell me why my interpretation and the reading of Scripture, just what it says, tell me why it's wrong. This is a serious stuff. You know, the church is going to go into apostasy, as the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 2. Well, you know what? You don't want to be part of that, do you? Hey, we'll be right back after these messages. Please give me a call, four open lines, 877-207-2276. Be right back. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the show. Now, I'm trying to text somebody in uh, Clubhouse, and it's not letting me text for some reason. So, Rotten Tulip, why don't you call me up on the radio and uh, talk about what your bio says about uh, about it. Love to talk with you. Please feel free, 877 877- Two zero seven two two seven six Buskman from Ohio. Hey, Buskman, welcome. You're on the air. Hey, Matt. Once again, it's always a blessing to get to talk to you, sir. A um, couple weeks ago, uh, we had a tragedy uh, in close proximity of my area where a Haitian illegal Haitian immigrant had got behind the wheel of the car. Uh, went off the road and basically caused a school bus full of children to uh, wreck and a child died. Mm -hmm. Um, In the comments of the rumble, I'm going to post that story from christianpost.com, Matt, so you can read it and so can your uh, listeners uh, if they're following you on rumble. Um, Here's a cool story real quick, Matt. Um, the, The day, I believe it was the day after that tragedy, the moms and dads of the area gathered where the crash happened and cheered on the children in the school buses passing so to help them with their grief and the and the and to kind of help them with their uh their Mm -hmm. negative emotions about being in that area where the crash had just occurred just just basically hours 
prior. I thought that was really cool. My boss actually told me about that and showed it to me on his phone. I said, I would like to shake every one of those, those mom and dad's hands. My question, Matt, is this. I know the church. I heard the missionaries on the stage, quote unquote missionaries. And they said that they were going to partner with the federal government in McAllen, Texas, and help the federal government process the migrants coming across the southern border. And the pastor said, we're going to, we're going to take up, you know, an offering for these folks. And I just found out recently that they reported back to that church to, and and the pastor was all for them being there. Should tithe dollars go to that kind of activity, Matt? Um, I can't, in their defense, I can't tell they you. did say they they were going to evangelize, but yeah, um, I can't tell you what what the people ought to do uh, in that respect. That's between them yeah. and God. I wouldn't support it. That's just my opinion. Because I believe what's happening at the border is illegal. And I believe that the President of the United States, this moron who's in office, is uh, trying to destroy our country. And I don't want to assist people in it. In my heart, and I talked it over with another brother too, Matt, it seems like aiding and abetting. The church is aiding and abetting this illegal activity. And should our tithe dollars be supporting such activity? I, I I, I actually taught to the missionaries when they got off the stage when I saw them. And I said, ma'am, sir, can't you go to their country of origin and, yeah. and, and give them the gospel? Why are you waiting for them to, to illegally cross the United States southern border and then you quote-unquote evangelize if you actually evangelize them? And what you set up on the stage was that you are going to aid the federal government in processing these folks. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have so, a problem with that. That's I couldn't I, reconcile it, Matt. You know, I can't even watch news anymore. I, I stopped about three months ago yeah. because I get so angry at the, what the evil that our government is doing. And it's promoting homosexuality, it's promoting abortion, and now it's flooding, letting yeah. our, our borders be crossed by, and flooded with uh, people, not just illegals from different countries, but also from people people who are coming in our country who hate America and are, are going to be working in a secret cells in order to wait to the right time to destroy and to cause problems. And this is what's going to happen. Sure. And Biden, as far as I'm concerned, he's the Biden crime family. He ought to be impeached at the least. And uh, I think good men, ought to, uh, they've got to do something because we're going to lose our country and it's happening. You know, and I'm here yeah. in Idaho. And uh, I speak Spanish pretty well, you know. And uh, I'm, I'm in stores up in here in Idaho, and I hear people just speaking Spanish all the time. And I'm like, come on. Mm -hmm. You know, at least, right. uh, you know, I get it. Uh, you know, you can learn, learn, you know, speak the language you, you know, you're comfortable with. But I'm just hearing it more and more. And I was in San Diego for, you know, 14 years. And you had to speak Spanish to get around. It, it, you know, if you could come to the country, learn a language. And it just doesn't seem to be happening. It seems, what seems to be happening is that people coming in, they keep their culture, they want their language, and they want us to adapt to them. Well, that's the formula for the destruction of one of the factors of destroying a country. When you go into a country, if I were to go to Germany and live there for 10 years, one of the first things I'm going to do is take lessons on how to learn a language and speak their language to the best of my ability. That's what you do. You learn their culture. You don't demand what you want for yourself. And I got... I got lots of stories from being down there. I do. I got stories. And it's not good. And so I know what, uh, you know, I, I've had firsthand experience in it in several different contexts. So I, I just think what Biden is doing is, is, is wrong. And, uh, you know, people want to come into the country, do it legally. Do it the, the way you're supposed to do it. That's all. Yeah. But it, it makes me so friggin' mad what he's doing. He's a he's a socialist yeah. communist, as far as I'm concerned, who hates this country. Yeah, you know, he's just trying to. And I'm uh, sure a lot uh, of a lot of uh, Americans feel the same way, Matt. And, and where it mm -hmm. came, when it came into the church, sir, that's when I really got uh, flags went up, and mm -hmm. I thought I I'm going to have to talk to this couple, you know, at least try to reason with them um, calmly, you know. And um, it seemed like it it. it it, it went in one ear and out the other. Somehow they seem justified, and I'm, I'm like, they don't care. <sighs> yeah, mm -hmm. 
I couldn't See, finish my thought because I get upset. <laughs> yeah. You know, people, I've talked to people who said that there should be no borders. Okay, then you better not lock your door at night. You better have your door wide open wherever you live. If there's no borders, don't have a border on your domicile where you live. Don't do that. Don't be a hypocrite and say it's okay for someone else to have to pick up the cost, but not me. So mm-hmm. I've asked them, you, you leave your doors open? They say, of course not. So it's, you're, you're just a hypocrite. The left thinks, I hate the left, and I'm not proud of the right either. The left thinks they know better than anybody else. They're useful idiots. And that you're mm-hmm. going to, that, that nobody could beat America externally. They're destroying it internally. That's what's happening. It's, it's yeah. just so much stuff. It's just bad. We have a I great just, thing here. I kind of yeah. wonder. Yeah. I kind of wonder if I if I took the story that happened close to where I work. Uh, once again, my my boss mm-hmm. knows some of the folks that was involved in the cheering crowd. I thought that was so yeah. awesome. Um, what if that pastor found out? You know that the couple that he supports with you know with with his congregation's tithe dollars what if that was one of the people that those missionaries processed who got yeah, behind but, that wheel of the car in that yeah. area and in that little boy's dead but you could also I have mean, the same are, thing happen with someone who entered legally went through the process so it's yeah, not but the this best i was illegal yeah, this yeah, guy I know. was illegal. But I'm buddy. saying just yeah. because, I'm saying the logic is just because he's illegal and did this doesn't mean that that proves being illegal is bad. Because you can have someone who's legal come well, in and yeah, do the same thing, the and it doesn't prove that. Them. Yeah. It's a, yeah sure. So it doesn't, you can have someone who's legal come in and it happen. It doesn't prove that, therefore, uh, that what's his legal immigration is, is bad. So it's not the argument I would sure. use. But uh, when we start seeing uh, more, distru- well, well, we're start- starting to now, where um, groups of these uh, illegals who c- are coming in are now attacking the police. I don't know if you've heard yeah. about this. It's happening. Uh, so yeah. it's just, we're just breeding, my mom used to say breeding scabs. You just cause, you, you just yeah. make yourself worse for yourself later on. And that's exactly what's happening in our country. And as far as I'm concerned, they need to be rounded up and kicked out of the country. You just send them back to where they're coming from. because they're, And if you want to come in, you do it legally and not illegally. And I don't blame them for wanting to get a better life. I get it. But but do what you got to do in your country. We can't take everybody. We cannot do that. Our country will fail. We can't do yeah. it. And we need to send missionaries out there. But we need but what really needs to happen is we need to get these morons out of governmental office. And there's just, there's a there's got to be a deep state in, in control of everything. Yeah, I... I'm just tell you, it just it makes me so stinking mad. It, uh, it does. I can't even yeah. watch news anymore. Yeah, it's. It, it, it just but as Psalm mad. four says, and and the Apostle Paul reiterated, brother, we can be angry, but sin not. And that's yeah. that's where I want to go with you know. Um, should should I tell my friend who attends the church to keep paying his tithe? To you know support because part of, part of his tithe dollars that he's given to the Lord is going to help process these illegal migrants right. coming into the country. Man, and ask them. I ask them. Would you? I, I, I can't do it. I, I couldn't do it, Matt. I'll, yeah. Okay, a- ask them this. Would you support someone coming in and squatting in one of your, your bedrooms in your home? Right. Or anybody right. else's? And they're doing it illegally. They're coming in. Would you? And hey, it's okay. They're here. So let's evangelize them. It's okay. That you can support that? No. Hey, we got that, a break, okay? And that's the yeah, that's right. yep. Sounds good. Hey, thanks, Matt. I can All right. I can take off. <laughs> okay, go. God Have bless. a good evening, okay. brother. Bye bye. You too. Hey folks, we'll be right back after these messages. Please stay tuned. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. You can give me a call if you want, 877-207-2276. So we talked about, you know, various things. And um, I brought my notes up on uh, the biblical form of government and stuff. I was going to read through some of the things. I went through and looked uh, and and did some research from other sources and things like that. Uh, What does the Bible say about our government and how it's supposed to be? 
So uh, it says people have the right to do with their property as they desire, Acts 5, 4. And so we have these, uh, these climate activists who I think should be jailed. And they uh, go, some of them have gone, gone in and sliced tires out of, of F- SUVs. Now, I think SUVs are, are gas guzzlers, but people have the right to purchase what they want and let the market uh, change the issue to electrical, to more efficient, this or that. Not a bunch of people slicing tires. So that means you are damaging someone else's property. And that's not biblical. You can't do that. You can complain. You can protest. You have the right, because that's part of free speech, which is what the Bible teaches also. We're supposed to have a representative form of government led by godly people. That's Exodus 18, 21 through 22, Deuteronomy 1, 13. We certainly don't have godly people in the government, and I don't believe it's representative anymore. Uh, in my opinion, the... Uh, the last election was, uh, let's just say it best, dubious. Uh, read, uh, just look at the, the special uh, 3,000 mules. You should look at that. Uh, the government is supposed to, we're supposed to have self-governance, Matthew 18, 15 through 17. Private property rights, Exodus 20, uh, verse 17. Uh, the liberty to act freely, 2 Corinthians 3, 17, 1 Peter 2, 16. We're supposed to be able to act freely. So what happens now is, more and more in our culture, if you act in a way that doesn't go with the status quo, you're, they use the word canceled. And so it's called prior restraint, where you uh, restrain your own speech and uh, freedom because you're afraid you might get penalized for it. This is not a free culture when that's the case. We're supposed to have the right to bear arms, Luke twenty two thirty six. Practiced capitalist principles, believe it or not, Matthew 21, 33 through 41. And, you know, I see, uh, every now and then I see these morons, Marxists, uh, saying how evil capitalism is. And uh, they're just they're just stupid, ignorant morons. You know, because they don't study history and see what Marxism has done, what communism has done. More people were killed, uh, or over 100 million people were killed in the 1900s under uh, communist socialist uh, regimes. 100 million, over at least 100 million. And these morons say that capitalism is what's bad and they want socialism, real socialism. They don't know what real socialism is. Anyway, um, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 19:15, Matthew 18:16, that we're supposed to have a fair trial with witnesses. Um, that's good. And uh, this is interesting, Deuteronomy 17, 14 through 15 not to have foreigners rule over you. Now, that's interesting because in the United Nations, our country, our stupid, oh, it just makes me so mad, leaders, what they're slowly doing is giving our rights away to foreign powers. And this is ungodly. It's wrong. They don't have the best interests of America at heart. They're the ones who sit in their comfort of whatever home or whatever situation they're in and then starting to decide what America should and shouldn't do. It's supposed to be a representative system here, but it's not representative if someone else is saying what we can and can't do. And it's starting to move more and more towards that in the United Nations. Uh, This is, uh, it's bad news. Um, And the government does have the right of taxation, uh, and that's fine, Luke 20, uh, 40. 24 through 25, but not to be oppressive in it. And our taxation system is oppressive. Supposed to have the right of free speech. That's Proverbs 31, Galatians 4, Psalm 19. So uh, further Christian principles in government should be things like not taking a bribe, uh, not lying. Now, how many of you believe that uh, our, our, um, our politicians are, are just incredibly honest people of character? How many believe that? Not me. Uh, not take a bribe, not lie, you're supposed to be honest, believing that your position of influence is for the benefit of others, not yourself. Does that fit uh, the Biden crime family? Of course not. You're not to participate in insider trading, Hillary, uh, believing all life is sacred, even that in the womb. That's what you're supposed to be doing. But no, what do they do? They, uh, they promote killing the unborn. It supports killing the destruction of the life in the womb. You know, our borders are supposed to be secure, but they open the borders. Uh, there are such things as men and women, and uh, then our government is starting to blur that as well. And when you blur that, you uh, undermine the 
the strength of the family. And then when you assert that there's a male and a female, husband, wife, that's how it should be, then you're the one who's bad. So things are, are just, this is just evil. As Isaiah five twenty says, be, beware of those who call evil good and good evil. Um, sexuality should not be taught in elementary schools to children. This is another issue. Uh, it should not be taught. This is brainwashing. It's brainwashing and it's perversion. This is not the job of the schools to try and get children to uh, drop pronouns, to uh, transgender uh, crap. It's not the place of schools to do that. It's supposed to teach reading, writing, writing, and arithmetic kind of stuff. Not the morality of uh, sexuality. This is something that is between the parents and the ch children. But now what the state is doing is believing more and more like Big Brother and Brave New World that the state has the right to condition your children for the use that it sees fit. And this is something that we have to be careful of because when they start demanding your children, uh, they'll turn them into brown shirts. Brown shirts were the, the youth group uh, that were in Nazi Germany and it was a, an unofficial uniform. They called them brown shirts. And they would turn people in who didn't bow to the Nazi socialist system. Nazism was, a, was socialism. People don't know that the socialist party was, uh, Nazi was the socialist party. And so the brown shirts were those who uh, turned people in. And even parents were afraid of their own children because they were being indoctrinated through government-run schools. Now, this is uh, what's happening in our country today, folks. It's serious stuff. And we have the right of self-defense. And what's the government want to do? Take away our guns. Uh, these are, you know, it's just, it's, it's really bad stuff. And so, uh, uh, you yeah, know, it's just bad stuff. Let me read uh, something from um, from Second Thessalonians 2. I can go into that. Maybe it'll <laughs> depress people. Um in Second Thessalonians two, and we get to it. There we go. Come on. Um, now we request you, brethren, uh, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to Him, that you not be quickly shaken from your composure or disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter, as if from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. So the apostasy means the falling away from the truth. Well, our government is certainly doing that in the sense that um, it is falling away from the, the truth of biblical principles and governmental systems in protecting the innocent and not promoting homosexuality and the perversions of such things from an official uh, system. And so apostasy uh, in the world uh, is often followed by apostasy in the church. And uh, because the church what it often does is listen to the ways of the world and tries to get along. Instead of being evangelists to the world, they're pacifists uh, to the world and let the world become the aggressors. But anyway, uh, Paul says, let it, no one would deceive you for the coming of our Lord will not uh, come until the apostasy comes first. So this is happening in the Christian church. Now, the, the Roman Catholic Church is already apostate. The Eastern Orthodox Church are apostate. They're, they're false churches. They're not true Christian churches. And anyone who believes in official Roman Catholic and official Eastern Orthodox doctrines are going to hell when they die. Official, I said, okay. And you can call me tomorrow, we can talk about it. And so the Protestants, uh, you know, they're, they're moving into heresies with uh, teachers like uh, Joel Osteen and Kenneth Copeland and Joyce Meyer and, and various uh, doctrines. Uh, doctors of demons as they're denying the sufficiency of the cross and uh, the the means of salvation only through Christ there are a lot of false teachers out there and uh, this is because people are not regarding the Word of God with the the severity that they need to that it is true and it's the final authority in everything it addresses and so uh, the Roman Catholic Church, for example, and the Eastern Orthodox Church don't believe the, the, the scriptures are the final authority. They believe that their churches are the final authority. And this is why they're in apostasy. And so in Protestantism, if you don't believe in the, the authority of the scriptures, then uh, you're going to fall into apostasy. And it reminds me, we had this guy on, uh, in, is he still around, where uh, 
he says the, the five points of, of uh, Calvinism tulip are just uh, you know un ungodly and biblical on this on that and I always challenge people like that I say well let's come and talk to me let's see let's go to the scriptures let's see what the scriptures teach and they don't want to do that and it reminds me this is a small point but it reminds me of those people who attack the sovereignty of God the majesty of God because that's what they're doing they're attacking the, the doctrines of God's grace that God calls God elects God predestines they don't like that it's up to us and so this is a form of apostasy man-centeredness is is an, an apostate position where uh, God is the one who judges you on your worthiness based on your condition of your heart and how you were wise enough to pick God that's not what the scriptures teach and so this is a, an apostate doctrine taught in a lot of Protestant churches so the apostasy is coming and uh, he says that must happen and then the man of lawlessness is revealed the son of destruction so the apostasy must occur and then the man of lawlessness the antichrist is, is to be revealed so the antichrist will come into play when the church has gone basically apostate you don't want to be among the apostate you want to be among those who are christians who may have to lay their lives down for the faith sorry but this is what the scriptures teach and uh, you don't want to become part of the apostate uh, system right so uh, and then this the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God displaying himself as being God so this is going to occur they're actually um, working on rebuilding the uh, getting ready to start building the, the uh, third temple in Jerusalem and so uh, if that starts happening start building it oh my goodness get ready we seem to be um, heading down a one world government kind of an idea um, I saw some recent stuff now where I don't know how true it is but I saw it, it seemed to be like a, a, a TED talk or something I don't know where it was a guy was talking about how they can um, get uh, brain waves they can start seeing what your <laughs> your thoughts and they can they have some really interesting ways of, of doing that don't know how true it is but uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Technology is advancing uh, very, very quickly. Uh, I do know they can tap into your routers in your homes and find out where you're standing. They can aim weapons, not just weapons, but these things at your home and they can tell you where your guns are. You know, I've talked to a lot of people who have a lot of knowledge about a lot of stuff that's just not taught very much. But this, these cases, these things are the case. I have a friend, I just say, oh, we're out of time. Oh, I got so much more I could tell you, but we're just out of time. I can't tell you about the vehicles they're producing to go through neighborhoods. Hey, oh, there you go. So, hey, I'll be on the air in about two hours on Clubhouse. Uh, just answering questions. Do it on Wednesday night if you're interested. You can join Clubhouse. Uh, uh, dot com. Clubhouse is an app on the phone. You can check it out. You register. It's free. Look for my name and you'll find it. In two hours. Hey, I'm out of here. God bless everybody. Talk to you tomorrow. Another program powered by the Truth Network. <laughs>